more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the best resources for studying for the medicine shelf, as well as some of the resources that you can use while on the rotation itself. So I think just to get started, a very broad overview of what type of books will be useful for you and also what type of resources is kind of broken down into what you'll need. So one, you'll need some type of question bank. You'll also need some type of textbook or multiple textbook. Some people may utilize some videos and also there's a lot of websites and physical resources that you can use on the rotation itself. And I'll talk about each one of these in a second. So first off, what question bank do you use? And it's very similar to step one is that you're going to be using using UWorld for the question bank for the, the bulk of your, your learning. The one thing great about UWorld, and this is specifically UWorld for step two, is that there's about 1,400 questions, give or take, in the medicine section alone. I think there's somewhere around 2,300 to 2,500 total questions, but about 1,400 of those are for medicine. So really for your medicine shelf, probably for the most part, you can just utilize the question bank itself and not too much more resources other than that. Obviously, it will all depend on what your foundation is and how much you actually know and how much you learn from the rotation itself. But if you really wanted to just get by with the very limited amount of resources, you could just use the, the UWorld by itself and just do those 1,400 questions. And you can also do some NBMEs if you would like, but they're definitely not mandatory just because there's so many questions that you'll utilize. So definitely in regards to practicing for the shelf, UWorld is going to be the best resource. There's also a lot of textbooks that you can utilize, and I think this all depends on the person. So some people really want to use the textbooks to get some type of broad overview of the subjects that they're learning. A lot of times people can't just utilize the question banks by itself because it's just too specific. You're not really given some type of context. You're just giving a very specific question and really it's hard to kind of extrapolate from that one question for some people. Other people may find it very simple. So if you want a textbook, and also textbooks are very good for when you're trying to learn the content just for the rotation itself. For example, when people ask, what is your approach to renal disease? What is your approach to CHF? Or what is your approach to whatever disease it may be? Just going off of UWorld itself it may not be the best way. Sometimes you need some type of broad overview. And there's four books that I can kind of recommend. And it all depends on what you like the most. They're all very different from First Aid for Step 1, although I do know a lot of people who still utilize First Aid for Step 1 on their rotations, which I don't know how I feel about that. I think that there's definitely very specific information that you'll learn from First Aid for Step 1. And oftentimes it's better because you can recall a lot of this information because you are already studying for it for step one and you you memorize all these tables, you memorize all this information. So it's a good resource in that sense. But actual clinical knowledge, it's not as useful. And so that's why I think that some of these books are a little bit better. So if you want a very detailed book, uh, a book like Step Up to Medicine is going to be probably going to be the best resource out there. It's very detailed, gives you all the information that you'll need, oftentimes a little bit too much. Um, and I think that it's really good as especially while you're on your medicine rotation because it's good to have that foundation so that you can do really well during the rotation, learn all the diseases because you have the time to do that. And so then when the actual step two comes along, you'll be much more prepared because you won't be able to read through step up to medicine when you're actually studying for step two. So that's one thing that's really good about that book. First aid for step two, also step up to step two, which is in the same category, step up to medicine, but just catered more broadly for step two in general. These are more, I would say, more of a broad overview. Don't go very detailed into each of the different diseases, and this all depends on what you prefer. For all four of these books, it's mainly, I would say, mainly just bulleted information, not so much tables and not a whole lot of actual text, like paragraph reading, but it's definitely very different from First Aid for Step 1, where it was all tables. So, and then the last book is Smash the Boards, and it's very surface level. Reads a little bit easier, in my opinion, but very surface level and really just will 
give you a very broad overview. If you just want to learn a little bit in the very beginning or use this to answer some of the clinical questions that you may be pimped on, I think it'd be a great book. So that's kind of how the order that I arranged it in order of detail to surface level books, depending on what you want. Because I'm not saying that being surface level is bad. I think that it all depends on what you want in a textbook. If you want a very broad overview of all this information, but not go into very much detail and then using UWorld to get the actual detail. And I think that Master of the Boards will be a perfect textbook. And it's also something that you can use for step two. And it's not a whole lot of pages for the actual internal medicine section. So it's definitely something that's a lot more manageable. But if you're the type of person that wants the detail, wants to read everything um, and know everything before you do all these questions, then Step Up to Medicine is probably a better book for you. But all four of them are very good. I've utilized them in some form or other at least some point in my education, but it all depends on what you prefer in terms of your learning. This next one is more or less, I would say, optional that depending on how you learn, if you're a visual learner, then video lectures would be very useful. And I think that one of the best resources, in my opinion, is going to be online med ed. And the reason why I say this is because I think it gives a very good, broad overview of these very large topics in medicine and also in surgery and OB-GYN and in all your rotations, essentially. They've kind of got it covered. If you look at this table over here on your right, um, they pretty much covered every single topic within medicine. And I think that it gives you a very good overview without going too much into detail, but just really trying to figure out what you need to know at a very surface level. It doesn't go over any questions, but it's very good at just giving you very broad overview knowledge and teaching you in a way that you may be able to relate a little bit better to. And it's not so advanced that you won't be able to understand it. It's catered specifically towards medical students, which I think is extremely helpful and extremely useful. So this is a great resource. I think if I were to be honest, the way I would compare it to is very similar to Pathoma. It gives very big concepts and kind of pairs them down into as simple measures as possible, trying to really teach you in the easiest way possible and sometimes oversimplifying things. But I think for the better, I think sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around these big concepts, but having a broad framework is very helpful. And online meta does that pretty well. I would say around anywhere from two to four hours of lecture per section. So it's going to be something that you're going to be doing in the long term over your entire rotation. The next two are going to be Sketchy Micro and or Sketchy Medical and Pygmonic. And I think that if you haven't heard of them before for step one, I probably wouldn't use it again if I didn't already use it for step one. So this is not a resource that I would recommend for just if you've never used it before, let's start now during rotations. No, but I think that if you've used it before, and for those that don't know what it is, it's a, it's a resource that helps you memorize different diseases, different pharmacology, different drugs, and also biochem and microbiology, things like that. And they use pictorials, these little cartoons that they drew uh, to help you memorize them. It was really great for step one. And if you used it for that, then it would be a good resource to kind of just brush up on, I would say micro and farm. Um, more so for the shelf, although the shelf doesn't really test that detailed in terms of micro and farm, um, but m much more so than any of the other aspects of Sketchy Medical or Picmonic. So definitely use it only for those two. You don't need to know as detailed as you would for step one. Like you don't need to know all the mechanism of actions or anything like that. You just kind of need to know what is the drug used for um, and maybe what are some of the side effects that you need to, to look out for. And that's pretty much all you'll need for the shelf. So it's something that definitely if you used it before, you can use it again, but only for these specific purposes. This next one is some of the resources that you can use while while you're on the wards. And I think that the first one is going to be pocket medicine. I think probably everybody has heard of it. And if you haven't heard of it, I would definitely check it out. But essentially, the best way to describe it is it's kind of like the up to date, but in pocket and text version. So it's the offline version of up to date, if I were to describe it easiest. Um, and it 
pretty much just walks you through each of the major diseases, what is the approach, what are the treatments, and in a very simple, I would say almost like just a bulleted notes. I think if I recall correctly, this was originally written by an MGH resident while he was going through residency. He was just taking notes and he eventually made it into an actual pocket guide. So these are notes that are obviously made much better and much more comprehensive. And the good part of it is that you don't have to read an entire article on kind of just a broad overview of how you would manage, let's say, CHF or pneumonia or whatever it may be. I, I think it's a really great resource if you're just crunched for time and, and you want to kind of figure out how you would manage something. And it's something that you can just read up on, I would say, if you were to have a bunch of patients on your panel, and this is for the entire team's panel, this is something if you don't have time to look up every single disease um, and do a lot of research on it, that you could just look it up into pocket medicine and at least have that very basic foundation. So if you're going to be pimped on any question about other patients that may not be yours, this would be a great first step. So pocket medicine is very good. Other one is this is going to be something that I would say, regardless of what you do, same thing, you have to have some type of framework. The majority of your grade is going to be based off of your presentations. So one of the things that you can utilize is some type of template. Whatever template you use is up to you, but I would say stick with that. We have one that's a progress notebook and h &P. One thing that's good about this is that it will give you the h &P, So when you first see the patient, you can have an h &P, and then you can follow the patient along with your soap note and have the notes right there and I'll have a four-day soap note for you. So kind of something that's very easy to manage and keep organized with, but definitely whatever system you use, I would stick with it, but you definitely need some type of template, especially if this is one of your earlier rotations. I think that as you progress in your rotations, maybe you can kind of get away with not using any template, but I think that it's always better to have some type of system. And this is one way to keep you organized. And the last thing is going to be different types of websites that you can use while you're on your clinical rotations. The first one, which maybe you may not have heard about before, but I thought it was an extremely useful resource. And this is something when you get nearer towards the end of your rotation, right before you're about to take your shelf, this is something you definitely need to do. There's about a two hour, I would say it's a two hour review course. Um, kind of like we used to in college, you would have a review course right before the test. That's what this is used for. So Emma Holiday, I think she was a student before at the University of Texas, San Antonio. And she just made these four course reviews for psychiatry, pediatric surgeon, internal medicine shelf. And this was really catered just for the students there, but it's widely available and freely accessible to anybody. You just go to, you can just Google UT San Antonio Emma Holiday review course. And it's about two hours for every single video. There's also a PowerPoint that you can accompany it with it. And she just goes over the very big concepts that you need to know for your shelf. So, so what you can do is you can watch it in the beginning and then kind of have this broad overview. And then before you take your test, watch it again. Very short, but very, very high yield. Probably the most high yield thing that I could recommend. It's great because it's from a student's perspective. I think she made it when she was a fourth year medical student. The next one, obviously everybody knows up to date, I would say definitely before rounds and also just in general, you should know all of your patients as well as all the patients within your team, their general overview of their disease. So know how each of the diseases are managed for each of the patients on your team, not just your own, but all the patients on your team, because they're going to ask you questions on all the patients. And I think this is going to be the best resource that you should go to. It still surprises me that some people don't utilize up to date and they just kind of Wikipedia something, which I think is useful when you are crunched for time. But I definitely think that if you want a more detailed set of information, but not going overly detailed and not wasting your time, that up to date is probably going to be the best. And then the last one, which I think is very, very important actually, is using some type of pharmacology resource. And what I mean by that is in terms of dosing and frequency, up to date definitely has one. I would say that it's pretty comprehensive, but I think even better, and the one that I utilized the most was Micromedics. Epocrates is another one, but I think if I recall correctly, it's more catered towards pharmacists. But Micromedics is definitely an extremely high yield resource. And I think this depends on 
what resource you have available that's offered by your institution because micromedics was offered by the institution that I trained at for free. I think it costs a lot of money, but if it's free, then you definitely should use it. Otherwise, you should up to date or something else. But you need something besides just uh, Wikipedia or just recommending a medication. The last thing uh, you should do when you're presenting, especially if you're not in early third year, if you're in the middle or in the end or even as a fourth year, you have to be giving not just the medication that you want to recommend, during your presentations, but also the dose and the frequency because that shows that you did a little bit more research than just simply looking on Wikipedia and figuring out what the medication that they would recommend. So I think that that's very useful. It gives you the dosing and the frequency very simply, which is one thing that's harder with some of the other resources that you kind of have to dig. You have to dig a lot to find the information that you need. With Micromedics, it's literally, I believe it's the first line. It's going to tell you the dosing, the frequency, and for what specific disease. If you're using the same medication, but there's many different purposes for it, then it's going to be a different dosing and a different frequency. So Micromedics breaks it down by disease and what you're using to, to treat it. And I think that's really important. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.